Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at how you can work out the density of an irregular object through experimental methods, so which is part of the particle model of matter topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate the density of an irregular shaped object. So we can accurately collect the mass and volume readings for irregular objects, understand what graph to draw, to draw for the density of irregular objects, and then analyze the data taken from the density measurements for irregular objects. Now this is actually part of the required practicals for GCSE Combined Science. It's required practical activity 17. Use the appropriate apparatus to make and record measurements needed to determine the density of an irregular solid object and that should include the displacement technique for irregular shaped objects to measure the volume. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson we should be able to find the density of different irregularly shaped objects. So in the following investigation you'll need a top pan balance, a 400ml beaker, a 100ml measuring cylinder and some materials. So the first thing you would do is take an empty 400ml or 400cm cubed beaker you would fill this with 200 mils or centimeters cubed of water, which would be the volume before the investigation. You would gently place a piece of material in the water and record the new volume in the beaker. This would be the volume after in the investigation. You subtract the volume before from the volume after to find the volume of the material you've placed into the liquid. You then remove the material from the beaker and place it on an electronic balance to find the mass of the material. And you can then calculate the density by saying density equals mass over volume. So the first thing you would do is get a balance and ensure the balance is zeroed. If the balance reads a non-zero value when there's nothing on it, it has a zero error, which is an example of a systematic error. Now a systematic error is an error where the value of this error is the same for each measurement. So to remove a zero error, you subtract the value which you recorded when there was nothing on from all the readings or you would reset the balance. Now remember, different balances have different resolutions. So to record the results of the mass, you would record it to the resolution of the balance that you used. So if the balance had no decimal places on this recording, you would record no decimal places. If the balance had three decimal places in its recordings, you would record your value to three decimal places. You would then get a 400 mil beaker, and remember, milliliters are equivalent to centimeters cubed. So at this point, you place 200 milliliters or centimeters cubed of water from the tap into the beaker. Ensure the water is flat along the 200 mil line and look straight on when you measure this value, otherwise you would gain a parallax error. Now a parallax error is an example of a random error in science. Now a random error is when the value of the error is different for each measurement that you take. Now a random error can be reduced in science by taking repeats and averaging the values. So you would retrieve a material which is stated in the non-symmetrical or irregular shaped object materials table that you have. You place the material on the balance and measure its mass, remembering to record the mass to the same number of decimal places is given on the balance, which is the resolution of the balance. Then you will place the material in the 400 ml beaker of water. This will cause the water level of the water to rise in the beaker, but obviously be careful when you're placing the material in the beaker or the beaker may crack. You would then measure the new volume of water with the material in it. And when you measure this new uh, volume, you ensure you're looking straight on when measuring this value, otherwise you'll gain a parallax error. Now one issue with the investigation is if you're not using a measuring cylinder and you're using a beaker, you may have to estimate this value due to the large differences in between markings on the beaker. The beaker actually has a low resolution. Now to derive the volume of the material, we say volume of material equals the final volume minus the starting volume, then you can calculate the density of the material using the equation density equals mass over volume. Now if you are carrying out materials such as wax or wood, they, they float in water. So to carry out this investigation, you would measure the mass of the wax or the wood beforehand, you would stick down the piece of wax or wood to the beaker, then you would measure out 200 milliliters of water in the measure cylinder and then pour this in the beaker and then use that to then work out your new level to then work out the volume of this particular object. Now you then carry this out for many different materials. So you can carry this out for rubber for example, glass, coal, steel, aluminium, rock. You then record your observations in a result table. Remember you have to measure the mass of the object, you have to measure the volume before the object is placed in the liquid, the volume after, the vo the 
object is placed in the liquid, then you work out the volume of the material placed in the liquid by doing volume after minus volume before. Then you can work out the density by saying density is mass over volume. So taking mass of material measurement and divided by the volume of the material measurement. Now you draw a bar chart of your experimental data, placing the material on the x axis and the density that you've calculated on the y axis. Now why do we draw a bar chart with our axes labeled and with, uh, with the units as well? It's because one of the variables the material is a categoric variable so as a result it's best to draw a bar chart with your experimental data so what have you learned in this lesson you should be able to use appropriate apparatus to make and record the measurements needed to determine the density of irregular solid objects volume should be determined by the displacement technique for this irregular shaped object and then you can use uh, the, the balance to measure the mass of this particular object as well so if you've been successful and you've learned in today's lesson you should be able to accurately collect mass and volume readings for irregular shaped objects draw a bar chart of density for irregular objects and then analyze the data taken for to understand the density of irregular shaped objects. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson, looking at the experiment on how you work out the density of an irregular shaped object and have a lovely day.